Hey Cafe Crew, Colin Smith here, and I've got something really exciting to share with you today. And this is the magnetic quick swap system from Freewell Filters. These are basically magnetic filters that go on and off of your camera. Now, I don't know why nobody has thought of this before. It's absolutely brilliant. A term I hate to use, game changing, but it really is. And let me explain to you why. <laughs> But first, let's just have a quick look and see what we've got. So I've got two of them here. I've got the ND1000 filter, which also has a polarizer on it. And I have the circular polarizer filter here. And so let's just crack open one of the boxes here. All right, so we have this little bag of goodies. And then here is the filter system itself. Okay, so let's pop open the lid, which of course has a magnetic catch on it. Okay, so the filter comes in two parts. It comes with a UV filter, and then the filter itself magnetically goes on top, and that's what the system is. In this case, I can switch out a polarizer and ND filter just by simply magnetically attaching it. Also comes with a lens cap, and this lens cap, of course, is also magnetic. And here it comes with a cleaning cloth, which is actually really important to have the right material, because if you try to do it for t-shirt you're just never really going to get the smears and stuff off um, we've got stickers everybody loves stickers we've got a link to some video tutorials and this comes with a lifetime warranty and then of course we've got a filter guide in there so i'm going to take these filters out and try them out on the field but before we do let's have a quick look at how this works okay so what we do is we just take the filter and then we just screw it on the front of the camera Oh, by the way, I love the Photoshop Cafe on there. Thank you very much, Freewell. By the way, this is not a sponsored video, but these filters were given to me. All right, so once you've attached it, all you do is you pull your filter, as your ND filter off, and now you just have a regular UV filter. So you put this on like any other UV filter on your camera. You can put your lens cap on or whatever. But then when you want to change it out, you want to put a ND on there. It just snaps into place magnetically. You want to take it off, just pull it off that quick so it makes it really quick to change what if you want a polarizer okay just pop the polarizer on here and that snaps on and of course it's a circular polarizer so you can turn it and if you want you can even stack filters on top of each other so now I've got a polarizer and an ND so you need the ND filters to get these nice slow shutter speed shots like you're seeing here because a lot of light comes into your lens and you know you can just shut everything down stop everything down go to ISO 100 you know, F22, get that nice fluid motion. The only problem with that is your camera's gonna be flooded with light. And of course, all your pictures are gonna be overexposed. However, but if you take the ND filter, put it over the lens, it blocks the amount of light, and now it enables you to have that shutter open long enough to get that beautiful fluid motion shot. Now, here's the thing. I said this is game changing. I mean, it's not that big a deal just to screw a filter on and off, is it? Well, here's the thing. When you put the ND filter on here and you look through your viewfinder, it's it's black. It's very, very dark and you can't see anything. So what you typically have to do is you have to take the filter off. You compose the shot, you focus it, then you switch into manual focus and then typically you screw on your filter and then you take the shot and maybe a series of shots. But the problem with that is the minute you want to recompose you have to take that filter off so you can see what, you know, so you can see through your viewfinder basically what you're shooting. So each time you compose your shot, you have to take that off and, you know, it can be a hassle. And also you can bump the camera. So maybe you're doing some bracketed stuff as well. So the nice thing about this is I slap that on, take the shot, pull it off, reframe, put it on, take the shot, reframe, focus, put it on, pull it off. And so just the amount of time that I did that all those multiple times is about the time it would take you to screw one filter on once. So, I, I mean, I'm really loving these. And one of the things I like to do is I like to shoot at the ocean. And the thing about the ocean is, you know, the waves are coming in and sometimes I don't get a lot of time to get in there, you know, that I'm actually gonna go in, put my camera down, frame the shot, focus it, screw on a filter, hit that button, go away, the waves have already hit me. So a lot of the time I'll bring my tripod near the water. I go in, I mount my camera there, hit that shutter and then run back and then let the water come all the way around the tripod. 
I can pull this off, push into auto focus, frame focus, manual focus, slap that back on, and all of that happens this fast. Boom, boom, focus, bam, done. And I'm out of the way before the next wave comes and has all this water all the way around my tripod. And of course, I'm standing back and my feet are nice and dry. So anyway, why don't we head out to the beach and see what this looks like? So I'm gonna give you some tips for shooting at the ocean. The first thing you wanna do is you wanna arrive five or 10 minutes early. And the reason for that is you wanna just sit and watch the ocean. And this is for a couple of reasons. Number one, for safety, you wanna see how far up that water's gonna come. And here's another tip, if it's wet on the ground, that means the ocean is gonna hit there at some point, even if it seems like it's so far away from where the waves are breaking. So you wanna watch it because waves come in sets, you know, so it can be just very calm and then you can get a set of two or three waves which can be big and um, that swell can be much more than the rest. So you wanna watch it and see exactly how far up it comes. Look for places that you can stand, look for dry places where you can put your gear, where you can stand. Um, if there's rocks, look at those rocks and observe where the water's coming and where it isn't. So that's the safety part and also for positioning. The other thing you wanna do is you wanna observe the ocean for movement. You wanna see how it's moving and how it's flowing. And this can help you get those nice, you know, when you do that slow shutter speed, you're gonna see the movement in the water almost like a waterfall. So you wanna kind of see where is it swirling? Where is it moving? Where's the interesting part? And then consider how you're gonna frame your shot. Then you wanna wait for a nice lull, just kind of time it so when you go in and set up your equipment, you can go in where it's gonna be nice and dry. If you can put it on rocks and things like that, make sure you've got a really sturdy tripod. Don't use one of those lightweight tripods. I've done that before and I've dunked one of these cameras in the ocean. Not fun. So make sure you have a really solid tripod and get those legs down nice and solid. If you're putting it into the sand, make sure you push it in nice and firm so it's not gonna be moving around or you know, water washing away one of the legs and causing it to fall over. You don't want that to happen. But also look at the rocks and also there's a reason you've got a tripod and each leg can be extended at a different length so you're gonna get it nice and level. And if, you, you know, if you've got a higher piece here, don't extend that leg as much. Get it nice and sturdy and stable. And then the other thing is you, know, you wanna use your ND filter so you can slow down that movement. So you can have that shutter open longer and you can catch some of that movement in the water. And then you wanna frame a shot. I like to shoot wide. This is a 17 to 40. Um, and then, you know, I've also got the Sony and the Canon camera, whichever one I'm using. I'm gonna use the widest lens I've got. And the other thing is I like to pop it into autofocus and then get that tech focus and then pull it into manual. And then I'm just gonna, you know, attach my filters and then take my shot. And you know, it could be anywhere from one second to 30 seconds. Experiment with you know different types of brackets. And also if you're shooting into the sunset, you definitely want a bracket, which means once you've got it on that tripod, uh, you can do a slow shutter to get all that beautiful movement, but then you want to do one with a faster shutter maybe to catch the sun so that the sky is not blowing out in your shots. And then you can kind of put those together in Photoshop afterwards. And it goes without saying the best times of the day to shoot are sunrise and sunset. You know, you want to get that beautiful light from sunrise and sunset, but also twilight can work, you know, before the sun rises, you can get some incredible colors in the sky and that reflects into the water, it looks beautiful. And then also sometimes after the sun's dipped behind the horizon, wait a few minutes and then you can sometimes get an afterglow where the sun, even though it's below the horizon, the rays come up, bounce off the sky, bounce off the clouds and can reflect back in the ocean and, and it can give it just a really gorgeous, just brush of color across the sky and water. And then when you're finished, rinse off your tripod legs in fresh water. Get rid of that salt and sand. It's not good for them. And I only use carbon fiber tripods so they don't corrode. Here's these filters. These filters are multi-coated. They're scratch proof, they're dust proof, they're oil proof, and they're waterproof. Um, so I've taken them out a few times now to the beach and um, I've taken them through some surf and sand and these guys are holding up really well so far. So anyway guys, um, you might want to check those out. I'll give you a link underneath where you can see them. And I'm curious, do you guys use filters? Uh, what are your favorite filters? Let us know in the comments underneath. 
So my reviews are a little bit different. They're not a product pitch, they're more of a tutorial on what the different things do and how to use them. If you like those kind of reviews, tutorial reviews, re tutorials, I don't know what you want to call them, and also Photoshop Lightroom tutorials, hit the subscribe button and you'll get a new video from me every single week. Also ring that notification bell so you know when I upload. And anyway guys, if you like this, smash the like button into dust. And until next time, I'll see you at the cafe.